to Sacadorum. Oh, come now, Pops. Callahan, hop over and introduce yourself to my future father-in-law. Good copy for your column. How do you do, sir? I don't rightly know. How did I do, Jenny? Beautifully. You just knocked Cliff Callahan cold. Let me shake the hand that pasted Callahan. Gwen's making a spectacle of herself, fainting all over the lobby. Well, if Callahan sees her, he'll smear it all over his column. Excuse me. Dad, come over here. Dad, you simply must apologize. For taking a poke at that male gossip. You want me to stand by while he blabbed a lot of things that ain't true? It's quite true. I am going to marry Rollo. Oh, yeah? Can you take care of her? You got any money? Oh, you're figuring on using hers. Dad, you insufferable boy. Jenny, why don't you talk plain like you used to? How'd you get so far away from me? Why not face it, Mr. Barraby? Joan has left the prairie for Park Avenue. And my darling, you really have covered the distance. I'm afraid I've been penalized by my own father. You mean I set you back? Shamed you? That's all I need to know. I'll get taxi. Dad! Straight to the LaGuardia Airport. Surely, Mr. Barber, you don't intend to travel back to Nevada in a dinner jacket. Folks out there ain't particular what kind of a suit a man wears, but they're daggone particular what kind of a man's wearing it. Plane leaves at 12, Jenny. There'll be a seat for you in case you backslide to common sense. You can't go, please! You ought to go! Sorry your daughter missed the plane, Mr. Barrowby. Yeah, so am I. Oh, Miss. Could you tell me what's an insufferable boy? Pardon me, that's for me. We're setting down. Get your passengers strapped in, Dorothy. Emergency? We don't wait for emergencies on this run. We meet them before they come. Okay, Skipper. We've had a clogged fuel line. I radioed the nearest field and they're sending a crew over. We'll be able to take off again in a couple of hours. Well, I think I'll take a look around. Don't get lost now. <laughs> Folks don't get lost in little places like the state of Nevada, miss. Only in big places like New York City. Uncommon kind of you there, mister. Thanks. I'll pass them out to the boys here with the after dinner democracy. Well, if you don't mind us not being dressed for dinner, we'll be glad to have you join us. I was pitched out of a nightclub in New York City. That's a long throw. This is Nevada. 
If I didn't know it already, the smell of beans baked in sorghum would have reminded me. Our pilot had to set the passenger plane down over yonder for repairs. Then you'll have plenty of time for Chuck. Hey, Shug, huh? dish him up a plate of beans. Okay. How long are you going to be on the trail? About ten days. If you'd stake me to my chuck and a blanket, I'd like to ride with you. Well, you're more than welcome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Come on. What are your plans after you get the herd into Lamitas tomorrow? Well, there'll be other herds and other jobs. What are your plans? Well, just haven't got any. Now that Jenny has gone and got herself cultured. She's cut you out of the herd, huh? Well, I just wouldn't say. Maybe you can tell me. What's an insufferable boor? Can't say as I ever heard. Jenny Barabee. That's a good Nevada-y sounding name. I guess it's more Park Avenue is sounding to be Mrs. Rollo Bingham. Rollo? Rollo. There I am lying at the bottom of Prentice Dam, and you're making calves' eyes at a picture of Jenny. Must be tough being left an orphan. Yeah, poor little Maverick. What'll she do without me? <laughs> hey, she's doing all right. Sell my ranch, will she? I'm going to call her a long distance and tell her a thing or two. Wait a minute. Take it easy. Sit down. She's home. That's where you want her, isn't it? Yeah, but she won't stay. She'll have to until everything's settled by Rollo. I'll settle him by kicking him off my land. And lose Jenny? Thinking you're dead what brought her back. Yeah, that's right. If I show up, she'll marry Rollo just to spite me for coming to life. Well, looks like you've got two jobs, to save the ranch and save Jenny. I can stop the sale just by putting in an appearance. But I'm no competition for Rollo. Then you'll have to dig you up some opposition. Yeah, that's what I need. And that's what I've got. You're my opposition. No, no, I'm a traveling cowboy, and brother, I'm traveling. You sure are. To the bar AB with a contract signed by me. But you're dead. I wasn't until I died, and before I cashed in, I hired you. What for? Oh, little odd jobs, like, uh... Like running interference? That's too odd. Now, if it's something in my line... Something like, uh, helping out a friend? Well, I couldn't very well refuse a friend. But we're only acquaintances. Well, I figured after we trailed along together that maybe we were friends, Roy. Well, maybe we are, John. <laughs> you old horse thief. Come on. <laughs> Let's get aboard. Well, beyond us, what Jenny fell heir to, <laughs> the bar A.B. <laughs> Come on, we'll hold up in my fishing shack. Some shack. What do you catch, goldfish? Come here. When Jenny was five, I gave her a string and a bent pin. And they, uh, she ran it from a guppy to a marlin. To Rollo. Yeah, the wall-eyed pike. <laughs> but she ain't reel him in yet. And with luck, she won't. I'm a pretty good angler, too. It's funny she'd swing away from things she was brought up with. Yeah, like hunting and fishing and... Picnics at Crystal Falls with peanut butter sandwiches. She loves peanut butter sandwiches. Roy, you got to bring her back to peanut butter. Well, if that's my job, you better put it in the contract, John. I've got something more exciting in mind for you. And while you're about it, just flash this contract on her and make her stick to it. What if I can't get in to see her? I'm counting on you, Roy. If you run into obstacles, hop them. Hop right over them. And while you're at it, find out what's an insufferable boar. Get 
the boundary surveyed as quickly as possible. Miss Barraby wants to leave the minute the estate is settled. Miss Barraby, could I speak to you, please? All right, cowboy, keep moving. Who is he? Who cares? I just made a count of the stock in the West Pasture. 140 head. I'll order a check on this herd. Miss Barraby, I'll only take a minute of your time. What is it you want? Do you know this chap? I know his breed of drifter. Keep moseying, cowpoke. Now listen here, Miss Barraby. Didn't you hear my foreman tell you to scram? <laughs> I don't relish letting you boys out. I've known some of you all of my life. Pappy, you taught me how to ride. And warm the seat of your britches for yanking on the bit. I ought to do it now, Jenny. I barely be quitting the bar, A.B. I'm sorry, Pappy, but I guess that's the way it has to be. Mr. Bingham has arranged an extra month's pay for you boys. Thanks, Miss Barbie. If you ever need us again, miss, you won't have to ask twice. Thank you. So long, Miss Barraby. Goodbye, boys. I've got to see Miss Barraby about a job. Mr. Bingham ain't hiring any hands. Nobody gets in. That's Bingham's orders. Didn't I tell you to keep mosing? Listen, you, I've got some business with Miss Barraby. And I'm going in. No, you're not. <laughs> you want? To give this to Miss Barraby? Don't tell me you're going to turn out to be a process server. No, to be one of the hands if you'll hire me. I'm not taking on any hands. I'm not asking you, Mr. Bingham. Rollo Bingham. Does it make any difference? No, I just like to get names and numbers right. It is Rollo, isn't it? Listen, I hereby engage Roy Rogers for the sum of $500 to act as driver of the Barraby stagecoach in the Frontier Day celebration. I am giving him full authority to pick and train the team he will use and to hire any assistance he may need for this work. In the event he wins the race, I agree to give him an additional bonus of $250. Signed, John Barraby. This is ridiculous. How do we know who you are? My name's there. It is Dad's signature. When did he draw up this contract? Oh, about 10 days ago. Their plane was stalled south of Mariposa Canyon. During the wait for repairs, we met up. The emergency landing. Hello, Colonel Jack. Hello there, Jenny. Wait a minute. I want you to meet my fiance, Rollo Bingham, Colonel Jack Thompson, my godfather. How do you do, sir? From the adjoining ranch? Yeah. For 60 years, the Bar A.B. and the Circle T have stood side by side with never a squabble. <laughs> Except who has the fastest team of coach horses. Better get yourself a good team and a good driver, because this time I aim to carry off the trophy. The race will have to go to you by default, sir. Joan is remaining only until we get all the loose ends cleared up. I'm afraid, Colonel Jack, the Bar A.B. won't participate this year in the Frontier Celebration. That's breaking a contract your dad saw fit to draw up. I'll settle with you for the full amount, Mr. Rogers. I don't break the Barraby word. Only the tradition. I've got a sneak and hunt. Your dad won't rest easy knowing that Jenny Barraby hasn't got what it takes. Jenny? Aren't you getting a trifle familiar? The name is Joan. Fancy sounding, but in my book, it's still quitter. Did my father appoint you also as a critic? That's a little head work I'm throwing in. It's straight thinking, son. No, no, John, I'd say those would be his sentiments. I'm certain sure they're mine, Jenny. Well, you're entitled to your opinion, Colonel. Have you any further observations to make? One more. You can skip my end of the deal, Miss Barraby. But you were hired in good faith. To ride the race, not take soft money. From a Barraby who has gone soft? Well, I didn't say that. You didn't have to. Colonel Jack, take a hitch in your belt. The Bar AB is in the race. Fetch your gear to the bunkhouse, Slim. You're hired. 
All hitched and ready. What's that? Well, that's a... Uh, well, uh, Cook said I'd better bring it along. Oh, it's a picnic lunch. This sort of calls for a picnic, doesn't it? I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I won't have time. I'm lunching in town with Rollo. Then we'll have to disappoint the cook. He needn't know. We'll keep it aboard for ballast. Okay. Come on, boy. Shall we give them a workout under actual racing conditions? Let them go. Well, sit tight. Ha! Come on, boy. So many regrets. I called him an ornery galoot. And he was such a special gent. Why don't you say it a little louder? He might be listening from above. A special and very grand gent. Better duck. Uh, into this coat. You're drenched. Yeah, and I'm cold and hungry. Oh, I like the fire. I'll unpack the lunch. You know, I was hoping we could have this picnic style. Do you like picnics? Don't tell Rollo, but I do. Don't you tell Rollo. I'm a picnic addict. Well, let's take a rain check on one. Let's have one. Where? Here. Right here by the campfire. All right. Oh, peanut butter sandwiches. It's a real picnic. Well, here it is. Pure hold, but still chock full of tradition. Worn by all the Barbie drivers, huh? Mm -hmm. Hope I fit into it. I have a hunch you will. She's all set to go. Fine. Don't get your shine rubbed, though. Take her into the courthouse square and shame those other buggies. <laughs> I'll send one of the boys with a buckboard to bring you back. I'm not coming back. I'm sleeping right with the coach. How?
Stanley. Princess Speckle fond of you, Kit Carson. Where's the professor? You mean Chief Running Turtle, the vanishing American. He's off communing with the still hill spirits. And I have a hunch he's going to end up with a bad case of barrel fever. Why the buckskin front? What's your racket? I'm driving in the coach race. I had this town clock for a good strip today. What with the celebration and the coach race? And the old goon runs off the reservation. There's still a little lettuce to be made if I could whip up a good wind jammer. A what? <laughs> if I could get a little help to make some music before I throw the pitch. Maybe I can do something about it. Hey, Bob, Tim, Hugh. Come on over here. What is it, Roy? Yeah. Help the little lady out. Play her tune or two. What is it? It's this. I will, Jenny, or er, Miss Barraby. <laughs> Just Jenny will do. Only until after the race. Then I guess it's goodbye, Jenny. I don't like saying goodbyes. I'm tempted not to. You mean there's a chance of you staying? Well, I have been known to change my mind. How will I know if you do? You win the race, and I'll tell you at the party tonight. And if we lose? Well, there might be a slight difference, but I'll still tell you tonight. I think I'd better win, boss. I kind of like Attention it. Attention, all contestants. Barbie, coach, take your place in the starting line. Good luck, Roy. Thanks.
Matter of fact, Professor Hanley is my name, and I never forget a familiar face. All right, all right. Yes, but friend, your face is very familiar. You're John Barraby. Yes, but don't blab it around. I'm in hiding. I'm supposed to be dead. Yeah. Oh, well, this is a happy encounter, John. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. For every day that you remain dead, I'll keep your deep, dark secret at the nominal price of $100 a day. That's blackmail. Oh, why don't you look on it as a luxury tax? What? Miss Barraby and Thompson, with Thompson ahead by 20 yards. Walker's out of the running. Barraby driver is closing the gap fast. Looks like it's going to be a close one. Congratulations, Jenny. It was a great race. Thanks, Colonel Jack. I think I should sell you some of the Barraby horses. My horses were all right. It was my coast that broke down. Excuse me. Not anymore. They're cheering now because the Barabi went. Wait a minute. Wait oh, a minute. we can't get you. Come on. Oh, my. Get out of there. Hold it up. A hundred dollars was my standing price. If I'd known about this trek on all fours, I'd have raised my ante. Oh, stop gambling. You'll get your plunder after I rig myself out in a disguise for that costume party. Now come on and keep quiet. Oh, don't you remember sweet Betsy from Pike who crossed the big mountains with her lover Ike with two yoke of cattle, a large yellow dog, a tall Shanghai rooster and one spotted hog. Saying goodbye, Pike County, farewell for a while. We'll come back again when we've panned out our pile. The engines came down in a wild yelling horde, and Betsy got scared they would scalp her adored. Behind the front wagon wheel, Betsy did fall, and there she shot engines with musket and ball. Saying goodbye, Pike County, farewell for a while. Brother, if I had that boy in my troop, I could sell ice skates on the Congo. <laughs> Say, there's my daughter. A pair of his Pike County pants. Sweet Betsy was covered with ribbons and rings. Oh, Dyke, you're an angel, but where are your wings? Say goodbye, Pike County. Farewell for a while. We'll come back again when we stand out our pond.
ladies and gentlemen, one special request calls for another. And this time, it's a special request for a song by the owner of the winning coach, Miss Joan Barnaby. It's very sweet of all of you to ask me to sing a song. I had an idea that perhaps you might. So I brought my family along. No, they're not here in person. In this album, they remain. And just like every other family, we remember one with pain. Our black sheep lived many years too soon. We refer to her <clears throat> as Jane. There was a simple maiden came to New York on a trip. And her golden hair was hanging down her back. Her cheeks were like the roses, she'd a pout upon her lip. And her golden hair was hanging down her back. When she landed at the station here, she took a little stroll. Hmm? At everything she wondered till she lost her self-control. Well, said she. New York is quite a village. Ain't it? Bless my soul. And her golden hair was hanging down her back. But Jane, Jane, she doesn't seem the same. Oh, when she left the village, she was shy. But alas and alack, as she has come back with a naughty little twinkle in her eye. She strolled into a cabaret one evening quite by chance And her golden hair was hanging down her back She spied a handsome male quartet and cast a timid glance And her golden hair was hanging down her back The tenor sang his highest note The bustle went so low the manager was so impressed He had her join the show ah. And she was wooed by each and every gay lafario and, and her, her golden, golden hair was hanging down her back But Jane, Jane, she doesn't look the same Oh, when I left the village, I was shy Well, I've come back with a naughty little twinkle in my eye. With a naughty little twinkle in her B. How do you like the rig? Well, it's perfect. But don't get too near Jenny. When do I unveil? When they present the coach trophy, you step out and take it. Okay. I might say on behalf of the committee that this year's was the finest Frontier Days celebration we've ever had. Of course, there was one dark cloud. The absence of Mr. John Barraby. We all knew and loved John Barraby. Somehow, I feel that he's here now in spirit. Therefore, it gives me great pleasure to present this trophy, this emblem of victory. Just hold that, along with that pretty talk about the tradition of the West. It's been clean busted, folks. Just like this U-boat that came off the front axle of my coach. Only not so clean. The taps were removed last night. This tells the story. I guess that makes it no contest. Give the prize to Colonel Thompson. No blame on you, honey. You were taken in by the softest singing, smoothest crook whoever... Whoever elected to sleep in the coach and who was obviously wide awake and busy. Well, John looks like I'm the one that got unveiled. 
How'd those things get into your pocket, Roy? Well, I don't know, but I'm going to stick around and find out. We'll both find out. I got you into this, you know. Do you mind staying out of sight a little longer? To set you right, I'll stay dead till I die. Thanks, John. <laughs> Darling, I know I'm not picturesque. I'm just an ordinary fellow in a sack suit. It's a very nice suit. And you're a pretty comforting guy. In the hopes of making you think me a romantic one, I've arranged for our wedding tonight. In the little chapel where your father and mother were married. That's very nice, Rollo. Then we'll leave here as Mr. and Mrs. Rollo Bingham? Yes. The sooner the better. Hello, that must be the man from Chicago who's interested in buying the ranch. Thank you very much. Come, come, my little daffodil. How do you do? How do you do? You're Miss Barraby, I presume? Yes. I beg your pardon, Mr. Pettigrew. Abner Pettigrew is the name. Now, Miss Barraby, how soon will you be able to vacate these premises? Vacate the premises? Yes. I don't understand you, Mr. Pettigrew. Oh, this is my niece, Miss Hildegard Frothingale. Darling, why don't you just run around and inspect the place and give me an unbiased opinion? Oh, I shall, Uncle. I'm never one to pull a punch. Yeah. <laughs> a waggish little pigeon, isn't it? I'm sorry I didn't get here sooner, but this is only one of the many properties I've purchased recently. I'm buying up all the ranch land that I can. I'm always on the move. That's me. Footloose Pettigrew, they used to call me. Sometimes land-hungry Pettigrew. Well, just a moment, Mr. Pettigrew. Let me get this straight. Are you making an offer for the ranch? Making an offer, my dear young man. I made an offer and it was accepted. That's the way I do things. I said to my friend Barraby in Chicago, I said, John, how much did you take for your ranch? 175,000 on the barrel head, he said. And quick as a wink, I came back, 170,000. Done, said he, and done it was, and I paid him off. I happened to have the money on me in small bills, thousands. Oh, Uncle Abner, the master bedroom is just too masterful. Fine, fine, my little cabbage. Cabbage yet. That's yeah. <laughs> Do you mean to say, Mr. Pettigrew, that my father has already sold you the ranch? Abner Pettigrew never says anything that he doesn't mean. Clear thinking Abner, that's what they call me. Now, Miss Barraby, I don't want to crowd you out of here, particularly since you're the daughter of dear old John. Did you know that John Barraby died recently in a plane crash? No. John Barraby departed. Oh, that's incredible. You know, I always thought he'd outlast me. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Miss Barnaby. Now, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to ask you to rush out of this place. Now, you don't have to. Does she, Ermagard? Uh, Barragard. Uh, Rosencrantz. <laughs> it's a nickname. Stick around as long as you like. Mr. Pettigrew, your papers are quite in order. You have John Barraby's receipt and bill of sale? Never travel without documents whenever I buy a new piece of property. No, sir, I don't want you to take my word for it, Frank. I want you to be so convinced in your own mind that you'll never doubt it for an instant. I want you to be able to come back to me and ask for another... I mean to say, I think that you're perfectly justified in asking for proof. And here it is, all signed, sealed, delivered, and in ship shape. You say you paid him in cash? Oh, cash it was. I knew better than to visit old John without a little small change on me. As a matter of fact, he put it in his back pocket. Well, it's probably still there. The bottom of print is damn. You may have the place tomorrow, Mr. Pettigrew. Mr. Bingham and I are being married and going directly east. Oh, fine. Well, congratulations to both of you. You know, my little niece here better be looking for a husband some of these days, huh? Oh, say, darling, do you think that you could rustle up a, a stimulant for your dear old uncle? I mean, to say, I think that a, a ranch like this, well-appointed, should have a, a bar or a, a cellar or a, a cellarette, huh? Thank you, darling. Would you join me? No, no thanks. Yes. Well, I suppose I might as well start packing, too. Well, there's no urgency in your case, Joan. These people have no objection to your staying on for a while. But we were going to no. be mad. Let's be sensible about this, dear. Neither one of us was quite prepared for what happened just now. I'll have to run out to New York. I see my bankers, you know. Run out? Yes, I see. Your bankers.
going inside. I'll have your money for you in a minute. That isn't what I came for. I'm not interested. I'll pay you for the excellent job you did, and then you may go. But I'm not leaving. Neither are you, Jenny. We both still like it here. I'm sure Rollo doesn't. I notice he's packed to leave. Jenny, you better sit down. The shocks are coming fast. Professor? Kitty, your job's done. And one of my better performances, if I do say so. And now, my dear, if you'll excuse me, this little field mouse is beginning to tickle. What is this? Shock number one, Professor Hanley. A mere mountebank at your service, my dear. Hey, don't I get any billing? I'm Kitty Hanley. Uh -huh. Shock number two. Here it is. Jenny, your father's alive and well. But the plane. He wasn't in that plane when it crashed. Tell it to her slowly, Roy. Jenny, this ranch was never sold and it's never going to be. Where is he? Where is my dad? He's at the fishing shack waiting for us. Dad's been at the fishing shack all the time. Yes. It's been a hard lesson to take, but I think I've learned it for good. This is where I belong. And I'll never leave the bar A.B. Darling, you're just upset. It has been rather a facer. I'm really worried about you. Don't worry about me, Rollo. Concentrate on your trip and your bankers. I want to see that ornery galoot. Well, he's waiting for you. I'll saddle up your horse and we'll ride out. You needn't bother. Ferguson's bringing him back. Ferguson? Yes, I told him he'd find Barrowby at the fishing shack. Sure gave us a scare. You, maybe. Mighty glad I got to you first. Plenty of things have been happening around the ranch. Yeah? Tell me some of them. Start with about 80 head of first-class stock that's missing. You don't have to look any further than that cowboy, Roy Rogers. I see. I suppose he took the bolts off Colonel Thompson's coach, too. Well, they caught him with the goods. You'd have seen that if you were at the ball last night. I was, and I saw it. And that's not all I saw. Ferguson, you're a low-down, sneaking, insufferable boy. You've been stealing horses ever since the day you thought I was dead. I'm going to see you in the state penitentiary if it's the last thing I ever do. The last thing you're going to do, boss, is get me in the clear. You're going to sit down and write me out a receipt for the price of 100 head of horses. Now get busy.
You all right? Yeah. I guess I'm not as tough as I thought I was. <laughs> Glad you got here when you did, son. Tell Colonel Thompson about the coach. I've got a stake in that part. It was his idea. He made me plant the stuff in your pocket. Sorry, I spoke out of turn, son. If there's any way I can make it up to you? Now, hold on, Jack Thompson. Don't go charming my new foreman away from me. I'm leaving. You're leaving, all right, with the sheriff's escort. Say, Jack, <clears throat> what's an insufferable bore, do you know? I know, Dad. Yeah? Yeah, sure. I had one once, but he got away. <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> Frontier Day celebrations just beginning. Old John Barraby's back in the land of the living, and the party's on him. <laughs> Gay diversion. Stay for all the happiness and sorrow. So come along. We'll take a long excursion to the state that I adore. Nevada. Nature sings a song of love from every hill and valley of Nevada. Mountain tops that kiss the sky reflect the sun and glorify Nevada. But please forgive me if I say As long as I'm with you, just let it rain all day Wigwam Pilo, Balamichikaimo Wigwam Pilo, Balamichikaimo Wug, 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 wug Sweet and lovely comes that haunting melody Wigwam Pilo, Balamichikaimo Wug, 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 wug Maiden, tell me Wigwam Pilo means a little teepee nest then she blushed, Balamichikaimo, she won't tell the rest. She just smiles and every heart beguiles with her wigwam, Bilo, 